Welcome to Straight Talk with Eugene Chan. Lawrence Lee Wei Kwan, the curator of our Space Museum in Sim Sa Zhou, is with us this evening to talk about sending Hong Kongers into space. Mr. Lee has been on the management team of the Hong Kong Space Museum for over 12 years and has been the curator since 2020, overseeing its largest renovation since its inception in 1980. What an exciting time to be in the space industry. Welcome, Lawrence. Hi, Eugene. So space is a very far away place from Hong Kong yes, very, and is yeah. also very far away from minds of many Hong Kongers yes. until recently yeah. when our Deputy Financial Secretary Michael Wong and the Secretary for Innovation, Technology and Industry Professor Sun Dong yes. announced the directive from Beijing that Hong Kong and Macau residents are, are possible recruits for our uh, mainland space program. Yes. And of course, this project has been endorsed and supported by our chief executive, John Lee. Yeah. Um, what they're recruiting is what they call a payload specialist. Yes. I think since you are the expert, <laughs> maybe, <laughs> you, maybe you can tell the viewers, what exactly is a payload specialist? Okay, a payload specialist is always a company, a space machine. They are not actually the one who controls spacecraft. They may, 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 they may carry out experiments to do science research on a spacecraft, on, the, on a space mission. So, this, um, so actually, um, we have a lot, lot to do in space. Besides controlling spacecraft, there are many research, research projects we can do in space. So that's why we need to do, um, carry out different experiments on different subjects, disciplines, uh, to normal the space environment. Because Honestly, we have to, sooner or later, our Earthlings will leave the, leave the Earth and to maybe go to other planets or celestial bodies. And we must have a very good understanding of, of the space, of the, of the effect of space and environment on us. Right, Lawrence, yeah. um, I'm sure that will be a very fierce competition. Yes. What you're saying is payload specialists are the ones going to research for us. Yes, yeah. So what are the basic criteria? that can satisfy, if, you, if I want to be a, a, a payload specialist, what are the criteria that they, we need in this program? Uh, at the present moment, the, the criteria they said is that they have to at least have a PhD degree and three years relevant experience. And so, um, but of course, um, and the degree has to be in a relevant discipline. Right. And actually in space science, it involves many different kinds of disciplines. Mm -hmm. We have um, physics, uh, chemistry, material science, Engineering, we have mechanical engineering, we have electronic engineering, or even um, computer engineering, system engineering. Right. Um, yeah. But also there's one, I mean, one criteria that they mentioned that normally we don't get it in the CV, or maybe you may get in the CV that they have to be Chinese national. Yeah. They have to be a Hong Kong permanent resident. Yes. They have to be a patriot of one patriot, mm -hmm. supporting one country, two systems, and also certain height as well. Yeah. Um, do you expect that is part of the, uh, the, the criteria? Do you think it's a fair uh, assessment? I think it's a fair assessment, yeah, yeah because um, you're, 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 you're contributing to a uh, Chinese space program. Yeah, so I, I, I guess these are, these are basic um, requirements. I, uh, yeah, I think it's a fair assessment. Right. Yeah, yeah. So do you think Hong Kong have the expertise in this area so that we can join the national team? I mean, now it's being open to Hong Kong Macau residents, but yeah. do we have those specialists? Uh, at present, there are more. There are around uh, thirty thousand uh, people doing science research in Hong Kong and doing many, many different disciplines. Uh, we don't know whether um, you know the the, trans the final selection rests with with uh, uh, with the Chinese authorities, with our countries. So, so uh, um, but I think uh, when they look at the, the CVs and different uh, ex experience of the applicants, I think well, maybe they would could see the possibility of the scientists, of the applicants, to be a spe payload specialist. Right, when yeah, you yeah. said we have like 30,000 potential... Yeah. Uh, I mean, they're doing science research here. Science research now, here. Yeah. Do you think we have a good chance? I won't speculate on that. Right. I know the competition is very, really fierce. Exactly. I, I, very keen, I, that's, I, that's for sure. Um, but I think, um, yes, actually, um, from a personal point of view, is a... Uh, Long time initiative, right. is, uh, yeah. Because we have we have to, uh, even if it's not success, successful this time, then we we'll keep on grooming new talents in this field. So why do you think mainland has opened up this opportunity for both Hong Kong and Macau residents? 
I think it's a recognition of, uh, for Hong Kong, I guess it's a recognition of the space science research they have been doing, uh, especially the, science, the contribution of uh, Hong Kong scientists in the Chang'e and the lunar missions right. and the Mars and Taiwan missions. I think they know that science has a very strong field, uh, strong um, presence in scientific research. Right. I guess, I, I think it's a recognition. It's right. a, yeah. And especially, for instance, for instance um, you know we have PolyU who are doing the, uh, develop the uh, camera pointing system uh, for the Chang'e system, Chang'e space mission, and, we de um, and also developed the um, uh, Mars, land Mars surveillance landing camera. Cam landing surveillance camera for the Mars mission. Right. And, and, in, and uh, two, two years ago, uh, Hong Kong US also developed a um, lob lobster eye X-ray imaging satellite. Uh, for so that's uh, so I guess we have a, a proven track record right. in science research. I mean, it's, yeah. it's very encouraging to hear those achievements by the Hong Kong scientists. Yeah. So that now we are being recognised that we are a good potential. Yes. This of the payload specialist. Yeah, yeah. So we got good track record. So let's move on further. I mean, wider field like the development of education for astronomy in Hong yeah, Kong. Yeah. I mean, we have five universities in Hong Kong, which yeah. is in the top 100. Do any one of them offer majors in astronomy or aeronautics? And if so, I mean, do they have sufficient specialist courses to make our scientists even more equipped uh -huh, for this, this field? Yes. Yeah, as, uh, as far as I know, I know there are universities in Hong Kong, they are offering degrees in aeronautics or aerospace engineering. There's at least three they are offering. And at least two, they are offering postgraduate degrees uh, in uh, space science. Yeah. Um, so for, 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 for uh, undergraduate, I know that most of them, the, most of undergraduate who want to study astronomy will, will, join a physics will join a physics faculty. The Department of Physics will be majoring in physics. And because actually we have many scholars in Hong Kong universities who are actually they are astronomers. Mm -hmm. yeah, so they can, so uh, when they will, um, they will uh, organize some courses and for, for, the, so for, for the students to enroll and to uh, pick up uh, knowledge in astronomy, yeah. Right, see yeah. Lawrence, you know, traditionally Hong Kong has always been having more emphasis yeah. on to other jobs like, um, I mean, not really on technology or scientists, yeah. but mainly on say, if you go to university, you may want to be a medical doctor, you yeah. want to be a lawyer, mm -hmm. you can be a banker. Mm -hmm. It's traditionally not as prestigious. Yeah. But with this opportunity opening up, and also Hong Kong being um, going to be um, asked to be the, the hub for innovation technology, yeah. do you think everything will change from now? I guess that is definitely a stimulus. Because uh, if we are, for, exa for example, if I'm studying um, mechanical engineering in a university, say, then I, I will suddenly, be, oh, Actually, the topic I'm studying, I can, I can, you know, a whole, whole arena of topics or new theme, research theme may right. be opened up right. in, in my field. Because, you know, in a space environment, it's very, it's very interesting because space environment is hard to replicate on Earth. Why? Because it's um, vacuum, the temperature difference, and the intense radiation in a space environment. Materials behave in the, um, and the microgravity environment. So materials behave so differently in the space. So that, that's, that's why we need a uh, space station to do science research in space, because the environment is so different. Right. You can see a few days ago, uh, um, the astronaut um, uh, Liu Yang, they performed a Tiangong lesson, and a Tiangong lesson, and do um, a lot of demonstrations on the physics of materials. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. And so, this is a definite stimulus for people doing science research in Hong Kong to seek new possibilities. So, so basically it's opening up a whole yeah. new, I mean, possibility that yeah, in the yeah. past you only study I mean, astronomy or physics on the, on the textbook, but now, yeah, yeah. now the chance has come. You know the universe is a laboratory. Right. Yeah, yeah. So this definitely is a very positive sign. Yeah. And actually when you, you mentioned earlier, one day, I mean, human beings may have to look at inhibiting other, other planets. Yes. So these are um, preliminary studies we must yeah. do to understand we'll do what that. We, yes. Because the, because the universe is so large and the, the, the celestial bodies are so far away. Right. Yeah, you, the moon, even if the Apollo mission at the time, it takes three days to the moon. And Mars, you, you go to the Mars, we colonize Mars one day, say for example. According to present technology, it takes nine months nine to months. go to Mars. Right. For quickest. Yeah. Right. So a round trip journey 
two months is 18 months, more right. than a year. Right. Just now you mentioned about the university, we have some undergraduate, we yeah. have some maybe some postgraduate courses. Yes, master's but how about in, in general levels? I mean, not everybody may have the opportunity to, to study physics or are good enough to study physics like yourself mm, yeah. <laughs> in, in the university. How about other levels of education? How about in primary and secondary school? Do we have all that being taught to our students? Uh, we are actually um, in, in junior level, in primary school, we have, uh, we have uh, astronomical knowledge being, being imparted to the students. Mm -hmm. They learn about the seasons, they learn about some basic space science knowledge, yes. And in, in, the, in secondary school, uh, in, the, in the physics uh, curriculum, they have the astronomy and space science electives. And to learn about some of the capitalist laws, I mean the orbital motion, the, the laws governing orbital motions, uh, classification of stars, and we, and we have the, um, the space weather, okay. space weather, um, space weather, the near Earth environment. Yeah. Right, well, Lawrence, we have to take a break now, and okay, no viewers, please stay with us. We will be right back. Welcome back. With us this evening is Mr. Lawrence Lee, and we have been talking about the opportunity for Hong Kongers to be sent into space as part of our nation's manned spacecraft program. So Lawrence, in the first half, you have told us that Hong Kong do have the ability with the um, ability of people to be payload specialists yes. and be able to be, um, with, because of our track record, yeah. I think we are being honored to be able to be selected. Mm -hmm. And if we are not successful this time, it's at least a good, it's a good start. Yes. Um, you have also talked about education. Yeah. I mean, they, it covers from, uh, from university as well as primary and secondary education. Yeah, yeah that they are, um, our students are being exposed. Yeah. But how about in terms of the community? Do we have any enthusiastic societies around? I mean, because community engagement is very important. Oh, yeah. Uh, actually, th um, the ecology of astronomy in Hong Kong is very interesting, actually. We have, um, actually before the inception of the Space Museum, actually we have a group of uh, astronomy enthusiasts, amateur and amateur astronomers in Hong Kong, even in the um, 1950s, or they're already there, yeah. And now we have um, six astronomical, uh, local astronomical societies. Uh, wow. Yeah, 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 six. And, and actually, in universities, and many secondary schools, they all have their own astronomy clubs. And so, and of course, we have the Space Museum here, we have to uh, promote astronomy for, for the for general public. So whenever there's a uh, big celestial event, say for instance, let me do, do a commercial here for the, the coming solar, uh, lunar eclipse on the 11th or on the 8th of November. Then we'll do broadcast, maybe uh, if condition permit, we, we do side, we call sidewalk astronomy. Then we will set some telescopes on outdoors and that, pa and that passes by to take a, take a gaze, take a look through the telescope. Yeah. Right. Right. Uh, Lawrence, I mean, as you know, Hong Kong is a very vibrant city. Yeah. We've got a lot of neon lights at night time and that's <laughs> what we call, I mean, light pollution. I mean, yes. Isn't that going to make stargazing a bit difficult in Hong Kong? Honestly, it's, in, it's becoming increasingly difficult. Yeah, because uh, the light pollution in Hong Kong is really very serious. So we have only uh, quite a, um, not, the, we, we call the, the the sweet spot in Hong for, for astronomical observation in Hong Kong is really limited now. Yeah. So, um, actually, for example, if you go to the south side of Hong Kong, say around the beaches, is that a good place for the viewers to know? Actually, it really depends on what kind of phenomena you're watching, looking at. Right. For, if we're looking at, say, a lunar eclipse, eclipse of the moon, then uh, the light pollution is not a big issue because you can see the moon all the time. As, as, as long as just your view, your ang view angle, the field of view is not blocked, blocked by buildings, something like that, then you can see the moon is okay. But for some astronomical uh, phenomena, say meteor showers, they need a very dark environment. Then you, we have to be very careful. Right, for, for, for instance, uh, the Lanus in the November, and the Gemini, Geminids in uh, December, they are all require very dark condition to, to see the meteors. Right. Are there yeah. any alternatives we can do? Uh, so uh, there is one field of astronomy that, uh, that do not rely on weather. It's called the radio astronomy. Yeah, because you, know, you use the radio dishes large radio antennae to uh, capture radio signals from different kinds of celestial bodies. And uh, actually, we are, uh, actually I, know, I, far, I know some, uh, we are at some univers universities that they are already set up some radio dishes in this field to do uh, radio astronomy. Yeah, that's, that's a possible, uh, a one field of astronomy that's not so reliant on weather. Right, yeah, yeah. Like Lawrence, as a curator for Space Museum, yeah. 
do you see yourself having a much better opportunity now to promote what you have always been, I mean, um, been asked to do is promote education in Hong Kong, especially with this new initiative of recruiting payload specialists from Hong Kong. Do you expect more visitors to visit the, spa, the space museum? Actually, I, I, I'm actually we are we are trying to um, stimulate the interest, uh, taking this this opportunity to uh, to promote the interest of astronomy and space science for the general public through different lectures or talks of him. So actually, uh, we are. I know the the the, um, the requirements of this payload special is very high. It's PhD and three years worth of experience, but. Um, we are trying to, as I have said, it's a long time initiative. And we have to let people aware that space science, space technology, is so closely related to our daily lives. Right. Actually, there are many spin offs. Yeah. Right. Um, I, when I was preparing the material to meet you today, I realized yeah. that um, usually, I mean, in the US and Russia, they call them astronauts. Yeah, yeah. But from China, they call them taikonauts. Yes. So, how is all this technology? after they've been to the space yeah. and bring back the experience. Yes. How is it going to be relevant to our daily lives? Wow. Actually, many, many, many things that we're using are, are a spin of a space technology. Say, for instance, your mobile, your, your mobile phones. Communication satellites, remote sensors. You see the sat um, when you go to the observatory to, to see the latest uh, weather map, the satellite pictures, they are space, there's, uh, nav there's weather satellites. They are all space technology. Uh, the camera, we, digital camera, we use a CCD charge couple device. Mm -hmm. uh, the imaging sensor, the CMOS, they're all space technology. Or even if the garment we're wearing, or the, or the running shoes, the material, actually they're all spin-off space technology. Really? It's really, there's so many. Yeah, there's so, when they are, um, when developed, you, I, I've said um, the space environment is very harsh. High temp the high temperature difference, vacuum, microgravity, materials behave so differently. So when so actually all these space, space technology are developed for, for survival of humans in space. And when they when they find it is very easy, very useful and can be applied in, in the Earth environment. And they start being commercialized and mass production and that's why we are using using them now. One sidetrack question, yeah. you being in the in the field much much longer than most of us. Yeah. Um, when, um, when do you envisage the possibility of actually living in space? How many more years do you think? Uh, living in space for how long? Well, well, it, it, it really depends on, you, you are, you, if you're really thinking of uh, human colonization, yes. then I think we're still a long way to go. Right. So many different problems to solve. For, for instance, say moon. Moon is closest. 38 uh, 338,000 kilometers from us. But then um, the moon's environment is very harsh. There's no atmosphere. And the temperature difference is very big. Yeah. And then you go to Mars. Mars, the, the weather is, is com completely more, more friendlier. Yeah. But it's too far away. It's, um, the closest is still uh, 56 million kilometers away from us. And uh, a trip to Mars take, uh, uh, take nine months. Yeah. And we have to be self reliant on the marsh. You cannot always de re uh, depend on trans uh, transportation of materials of, your, to the, of supplies to the, to, the, to the red planet. So you need to have to develop many technologies so you sustain your life on the planet for a long period of time. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So it will be quite, for quite some time, but we have to start working on this. And, yeah. and what i say, since you said that Hong Kong already has some basis of, us, uh, of all these science, yeah, yeah. scientists and also now with the opportunity, why are the opportunities would it exist for our, our youngsters? So we are um, always looking at new possibilities for our, yeah, yeah. the new generation. Yeah. Do you see these business opportunities? Oh yeah. Now, now you have a window. You have you have a you have a chance that the Hong Kongers may be, become a payload specialist for Chinese space missions. Then when 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 a, when a, a youngster youth in the say senior primary or secondary or secondary school, or even in the university, they think wow. Maybe this will, this will be worth, oh, of course it depends, on, depends on, on the interest, but of course this may be a career to, in space industry that's worth pursuing. Right. So this, uh, it's as, it's you said, as you said, industry can involve garments, it yeah, can involve yeah, yeah. So I mean, like, like telephone, mobile phones, and et cetera. I mean, yeah, many something like career do. planning, yeah, long-term career planning. Yeah, yeah, as I, I, I've, I see another possibility now. The, the subject I'm studying can, be, can contribute to the, to the, the main exploration of space 
and yeah, it's another vista of possibility. So yeah. definitely a big scope for expansion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. I see that. Um, yeah. So I, now I, this time yeah. we have the possibility of a payload specialist. Hopefully, yeah. Hong Kong has a chance yes. and Macau. And how about actually being the actual space pilots or flight oh, engineers? Space pilots. Do we have a chance? I'm asking asking more now. Oh, space pilot. If, um, Currently, all the, uh, as far as I know, all the Chinese astronauts here, I mean the, uh, the really the, the Yang Li Wei, and they're, they're all space pilots. They need to have um, experience, flight hours in flying combat planes, combat planes, yeah, fighter attack aircraft, something like that. And um, they have been recruited from the People's Liberation Army. And, as, and in terms of physical, I, I guess it's more, much more, the requirement is much more higher. Say, for instance, if you, if you have a decay tooth, you can go to space. Right. You're about it immediately, okay? Yeah. Because of the because if you have a ill fitted uh, dental fillings, because when the space the, the rocket is being launched, it's subject to very vigorous vibrations and G force and they're afraid that your fillings will broke out. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> you get loose okay right. and pain, okay? Right. And you uh, you can't even have scars on your on, on your on your skin because they're afraid that um uh, you're bleeding. I see. You don't know when you are in a so hostile environment they don't know if you 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 may have bleeding on your skin. Right. And this so I guess at, at the present moment, um, the, the requirement is, is quite stringent for, right. for yeah. Right, um, also, I mean, I was also doing some reading as well when I asked yeah. you, I understand that there's an emergence private sector in space industry, yeah. that the global space economy is estimated to be worth about 350 billion US dollars yeah, yeah. and could stretch one trillion by 2040. Yeah, yeah. Furthermore, with all this space technology industry uh, coming on the stock market, yeah. do you think Hong Kong has a role to play since we are the, one of the international financial center? Oh, definitely, yeah. I, I, I be, be, um, besides the uh, local universities, they're doing space science research, uh, develop the new uh, gadgets, new equipment for the Chinese space missions. And also we have, we know that there's, just, there's some company listed in the Hong Kong stock market that are start, starting to pursue, say, launching satellites for Hong Kong. And, and so there's, uh, there's, there's definitely another thriving business here. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Many thanks, Lawrence, for enlightening us on this previously unexplored frontier of space. We hope that the seeds planted will enable Hong Kong to contribute further towards our nation's achievements. Have a pleasant evening and good night. Mm -hmm.